come to terms with the fact that although class exists today, in some ways it's a more profound reality given the extremes of wealth, the extremes of income and wealth and opportunity, class consciousness has dramatically declined. What I've learned particularly from Susan is the importance of really analysing power. I mean, I tend to write about resistance and working class people resisting and organising. But really, you know, in a sense, for that to really matter, one needs to understand how power is working. And I think how it's working now is a particularly important project because, you know, we face this context of a most obviously immoral, unjust system. And so the question is, how does it reproduce itself and how far can it reproduce itself? The Susan's um, report, which she'll explain, emphasizes the fragility of the system, but yet it manages to maintain itself. How, how is that? Um, so I think without more ado, I'll hand over to Susan. In my very first book, I said, study the rich and powerful, not the poor and powerless. The poor and powerless already know what's wrong with their lives. They don't need you to tell them. What they could use is a clearer description of those who are oppressing them and preventing them from having a decent and fulfilling life. And that is what I have tried to do throughout my writing life. I wanted to reach my usual audience, but I wanted also to scare them. <clears throat> and that's what I've tried to do here. And I have tried to explain that the strategy has changed, that it is more subtle than it was, that we are in the midst of an incredibly difficult ideological battle, and we are losing. And that is why I put at the outset the quote from Warren Buffett, third fortune of the world, who says, there's class warfare all right, but it's my class, the rich class, that's waging that war, and we are winning. After that, he says, and this maybe isn't a very good idea, you know, that we are winning. But, th but he's, I think he's right. I think they are winning. I think this is largely an ideological fight that they have understood how to deal with. What would you say to those people that think that this is a kind of um, um, temporary crisis? It's a revenge against all of the gains which have been made by working people since the Second World War, basically. And I would not have predicted that. I thought that there were certain things that had been accepted. No, these have not been accepted, and that is why people's retirement benefits, people's wages, collective bargaining, uh, all uh, health care, all kinds of things that they're trying to dismantle. That is what I see. And therefore, I think we have to be extremely vigilant, but more than that, we have to fight every single change that they try to make because this is coming from all sides all the time and the indignados have done terrific work and that may be a thing that worries them and that's a good reason to keep it going but my reasoning on the uh, on the occupy movement was that it wasn't going to keep going and they did one very big service to all of us which is that they made the one percent uh, a household term this is now something which is in everybody's head. That's the kind of work that at least people in TNI, you know, and the people who are intellectuals or teaching or whatever should be doing. Name what's happening. That's hard to do.